how does bewitchment work? How does it work? So I'm holding a remote control car and here is the remote control in my hand. Car, back up. Drive forward. Turn left. I control the car. I control its direction. I'm not in the car, but I tell the car what to do. That's how bewitchment works. The person or the auto, whatever it is, is outside, but it can affect your body and tell you to be sick tomorrow. Don't go to work. I'm sending you cancer. I send you malaria. I send you this. It controls. It's as if this spirit could know what you were doing, what you had, and take control. So every bewitchment goes by the spirits. In the car that I command, there is a receiver. Something that can understand the information that I send. And this then is in the car. So if the devil manages to block you, to make you sick and decide for your health, your life, your business, it is because the information that he sends find a reception in your body. And if I want to stop the order, I have two ways of doing it. Either I hit the one who has the remote control that's casting on the devil to drown the guardian of the altar. If that's the altar, the one who manipulates it can be removed, but the remote control can be retrieved. Pharaoh died, didn't he? But there was another Pharaoh who turned to Egypt. The real deliverance, the final one, is when you kill or stop the receiver that is at your level. So what I do is I take the car, I turn off the receiver, I still have the transmitter, my transmitter is on, and I send the curses. Go back, turn left, turn right. Car, I'm talking to you. Whatever I do has no effect because I have turned off whatever it is in me that is receiving the message. Amen. So there's a dimension that you enter where the witches, whoever they are, cannot do anything to. Jesus was saying in John chapter 14 verse 30, I will not talk much more with you because the prince of this world comes like he has nothing in me to it in my life there's nothing that allows him to act on me nothing let satan have nothing in you hallelujah so deactivate at your level this is a personal work i beg you brother do not think that your victory is manifest when all altars have fallen the real victory is to be invulnerable because the sources they'll always be until the end of the world will exist you have to get into the dimension where you're invulnerable balaam could say the spell the enchantment cannot do anything in number 23 against israel he says because there's no iniquity in them because there is no iniquity in them. And that is what I want to talk to you about. What is this thing to be disabled? It's your flesh. The desires of the flesh. Why does the devil have access to the desires of our flesh? Genesis chapter 3 verse 14 gives us a major piece of information. The Lord God said to the serpent, let us read the last part together, and you shall eat the dust all the days of your life. So, brother, the snakes, depending on the size, they eat rats, crabs, things like that. But they don't eat dust. In verse 19, this is what God says, God now says to Adam, Adam, what are you? And thou shalt return into the, verse 14, the serpent eateth the dust. And Adam is dust. Are we together? When we say dust, it's the flesh. The desires of the flesh. Instead of walking by the spirit, you walk by the flesh. If you walk by your dust side, you will be consumable. So, in order not to be bewitched anymore, consumable by the devil, by the sorcerers, by the demons, it is necessary that you deactivate your dust side, your carnal side. As long as you walk in the flesh, that is your dust side, you are vulnerable. What is the desire of the flesh? I didn't say as long as you walk in your physical body, you are vulnerable. No, but as long as you're going to follow what your flesh asks you to do. And the Bible in the book of Revelation tells us this, that the desires of the flesh, or the works of the flesh, are fornication. That is to say, sexual intercourse outside marriage. Adultery. So someone, a girl who is not married, the man who is not married, who have intercourse. That is to say, it's the flesh that says sleep together. Do not wait for marriage. Have sex. When you behave like that, you behave in dust mode. Satan eats you when he wants. The works of the flesh are impurity, dissolution. Dissolution in other versions is written, parallels someone who is irritable, who is angry. It is the desires of the flesh. It means that anger fills you and then you say things through anger. You're controllable by Satan. He can eat you up because you're no longer walking according to the spiritual nature, but you're walking according to the desires of the flesh. You become vulnerable. The bewitchments find their hook, their reception in your carnal side. The Bible says the works of the flesh, what is it? Fornication, impurity, dissolution, idolatry, magic, enmity. I have enemies. You hate your neighbor, your neighbor, people. It's hatred. Bitterness, that's where Satan finds you. When you start to hate, he says, you are consumable. One of my daughters came to see me yesterday. She said to me, my father, what should I do? So she works in a company and she had promotions. God started to bless her. And then one of her colleagues recently told her that, ah, sister, I'm going to ask for forgiveness. She said, but why? She said, I am the other one in, in the same company. I am the other one there. We went to consult a fetish priest, a witch doctor, but it's not me. The lady said that I was not the leader, it's my friend. We went to consult him so that he would make incantations to block your progress. You have to remove your star if we can dismiss you even all that 
So the two of them went to see the fetish prayers they were giving the eggs to break on the crossroads and so on. The two went to do that together but the one who came to speak said that she was not too involved. Friend who dragged her but that she regrets and that she came to say to her sister, really, I did things against you with that girl that I did not want to do. Truly, I'll ask for your forgiveness. We went to see a fetish priest against you. My daughter said, oh really? She doesn't know. She doesn't know how to pray. She doesn't know how to pray in case she's confused. So fortunately, she had the wisdom to ask me the question. I said, do you want to know? Even the one who came to talk to you is not your friend. She's your enemy indeed. The most dangerous one is even her. For real? I said, yes. A long time ago, they made the incantation, but it had no effect on you. It didn't have any effect. Because my daughter tells me actually when she describes the time they did it, she said, I felt weird. Get up and I'll cook it. So I would pray, but they could not do anything. You didn't lose your job. Everything is fine. On the contrary, you got promotion. She said, yes. So you see what she's doing? It's because you've worked by the spirit. As she sees that all their spells do not reach you, they must have tried now to come and activate your slash. So by coming to tell you that this friend is against you, the goal is to create in your heart bitterness, hatred, anger against the latter. And if it triggers anger, there you are cut off. Then you enter into their possibility of bewitchment. No bewitchment can reach when there's no hate in you. No bewitchment can reach you when you are not bitter. No bewitchments can reach you when you trust in God. Anger is the work of the flesh. Hatred is the work of the flesh. Lying is the work of the flesh. Things like that make you vulnerable. And the enemy is going to do everything to send you into an area when he can get to you. He's going to make you hate. He's going to send people, this is what people say about you. But if they were strong, they would have killed you. But they couldn't. Don't fall into their trap. You're a person of the spirit. You are spiritual. You're a descendant of the woman. People start to get to you when you also get into hatred. So you have to be careful. All those who come to inform you that a relative is a witch are not your friends. Often I do preaching and they say to me, Pastor, have you seen who's attacking me? I say, I see, but I won't tell you. But why? Tell me. What will you do with the information? All it will do is create bitterness in your heart. If you're not mature enough to forgive, it's no useful because they cannot do anything to you. Yes, but I feel I have nightmares. I say it's just dreams, but if you go into hatred, it's not dreams. They will act. They will attack you seriously. Don't live according to the flesh. It makes you weak. Satan eats the dust. When Satan attracts you, your mates come. Oh, come. You drink. You drink a little. Remember the past. When you are drunk and you are carnal, then you are consumable by the serpent. They take people. They bewitch them by drinking, by alcohol, by sex, by hate. Jesus says, do not sleep with anger. You will give access to the devil. When you succeed in life, Satan will do everything. He will send people to provoke you to get you to the area where they can touch you but I declare in the name of Jesus that you are not affected you are protected by the blood of Christ therefore when you realize that you have made a mistake ask God for forgiveness because you have a time limit repent quickly then when anger wants to come and you say Lord grant me comments when hate wants to come and you say Lord teach me to love I want to be like you give them no access let Satan have nothing in you anger is not in your God in God your father there's no hatred with us there's no bitterness so don't take anything from the devil you have a good heart keep that heart that is why they could not kill you until now because of the state of your heart don't give them the privilege of giving the devil a place in your heart. Have a good heart. There's no place for hatred in you. There's no place for bitterness. If it's happened, chase it away quickly and say, I'm not like that. I don't know how to lie. I don't know how to talk like that. I don't know how to do that. Why do you want to take me where I'm not? You who God made you to be and don't become what people want you to become. Hallelujah. Somebody say a good amen. Check out the rest of this video on Pastor Muhammad Sanago's YouTube channel. Did you like this video? Follow Pastor Muhammad Sanago on Facebook, YouTube, 